Social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Flickr, and the reasons why I started a vlog all coming up here in this video. Stay tuned. Download DJ Crazy Jimmy on the Google Play Store today. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this video here where I'm just talking to the microphone is that basically I thought it would be a good idea to do a vlog channel on YouTube and that I had started that channel with the intention to basically just get experience doing a vlog on YouTube. And then I realized that I had something to talk about with uh, technology. And then also, um, I'm a musician as well. I play guitar and drums. Um, I was a DJ for over 15 years. And basically, I just thought it would be a good idea to talk about technology and music on the internet and I thought it would be a good thing to educate some people on how to create their own website because I also have an IT background. So what I you know, plan to do in the future with what I want to do is that I had moved here from Orlando, Florida to Phoenix, Arizona and that I've been in Phoenix now for one year. I've gone to Hollywood twice since I've been here just to go and see what it's all about and realize, wow, it's a crazy place. It's a big place. There's a lot of things going on there. I went to the Guitar Center there. It's really awesome. Um, they have a lot of nostalgic things in the Guitar Center there. I also went to the Mesa Boogie Store uh, across the street from the Guitar Center right down the road. That was cool. Um, I went to a really nice restaurant and had a nice salad. It was like it had some uh, chicken in it and a few other things, but it was made by some really good, uh, a really good chef. I'm not really sure the name of the restaurant at this point. I can't remember. It's a fork and something place. I don't know. I have to remember if I go back, I have to make a note of it and talk about it then, I guess. Anyway, the reason my point is about all of this is that I really would like to be able to do stuff with YouTube out in LA because YouTube has a, they have a, um, you know, like a sound stage available with the red one camera and a few other things, uh, a couple million dollars worth of gear. I'm sure they got lighting rig and everything stages. And, uh, it's, if as soon as you get 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, you're allowed to use the studios in, uh, any of the YouTube, um, studios throughout the US and I'm really not only that far away from that studio uh, Hollywood is only about three four hours four hours and a, uh, four and a half hours away maybe on a busy day uh, traffic wise but most of the travel between here and uh, Hollywood is only about uh, you know it's about 80 miles an hour on the freeway on the highway in between it's like a two lane road and you can get there pretty quick so I've been in Phoenix busting my butt uh, just, you know, putting some things together in, in the studio here and just making, you know, audio possible so I can do some recordings on a high quality basis and start uploading more videos to YouTube. I figured I would create a separate channel, a vlog channel for what I want to do and have my talking over there on kind of like why uh, some things I want to talk about in particular. And then I would have a separate channel, my just my my normal DJ Crazy Jimmy channel uh, for more of my music that doesn't have anything to do with talking in it. That way, if you subscribe on the DJ Crazy Jimmy channel, you only get really music projects that you'll notice. And then uh, from the studio that I have here in Phoenix, and then um, uh, then you would get like the vlog on the other channel where you'll hear me talking about different things. I started the vlog standing in front of the camera, just talking to the camera and... Um, I think what I'm going to do at this point is start this in particular where I'm just right here like I am with this image of me with the glasses, the hair and everything and, and, and the microphone talking into the camera, um, maybe doing research, uh, you know, and talking about what I do for research, um, my IT background, uh, what I've done with me, you know, with computers is that I had, um, taking classes while I was in high school at Somerset County Technology Center in Somerset, Pennsylvania, which is a, uh, you know, a vocational school. And the teacher there at the school was uh, Mr. Phillips at the time. And this was in like the 90s, 1998, 99, 2000, 2001. Um, 
and the school was really good, uh, really good for me, actually. Um, Mr. Phillips was a um, IT guy that worked with the government, and he worked at the, I believe he, what he said was he worked at the White House with, uh, you know, security on the computer systems back at the time when he did it. I'm not sure exactly what time frame that was. But he had an AS400 in the classroom, and uh, if you don't know what that is, that's a, a mainframe computer that they, you know, that most of the internet runs on is a computer like the AS400 is just a rock solid computer, which has been replaced by the IBM, uh, you know, the IBMs of today that have more of the I series uh, for rack mount in the um, data centers. So my my thing is is that the web has always been for me a way to look at you know different information and create websites. I started a website on GeoCities back in the day before Yahoo bought it for one billion dollars and shut it down. And I really thought it would be great to um, educate people today on how they could just download their Facebook data and upload it to a WordPress website and uh, take control of their information that belongs to them. And instead of uploading things to website, uh, Facebook, uploading it to their own .com, and then having a script within the, uh, the WordPress, uh, their own WordPress on their own .com, so they can share it to Facebook automatically, Instagram and Twitter. So you can upload um, information from your smartphone, from your Android or iPhone, right to WordPress using the WordPress app that's on the, uh, the Play Store and the, uh, the App Store and just uh, upload, like I say, you wanted to share a photo with the world, you could upload a photo to your .com, write a little blurb on what it is and say, you know, this is what I'm doing right now versus having to go to Instagram, having to go to Tumblr, having to go to, to Flickr, having to go to Facebook, having, you know, all these different websites, just put it on your own .com. Um, and then, you know, really, to be honest with you, if you get used to having a dot com and, you know, you get used to doing that where you share to your website, then you can have advertisements. You could have the AdSense program through Google and, uh, you know, you can they'll share that revenue with you that they make. So this is kind of the thing that I, I, I think needs to be the information needs to be out there for just the average person to be inspired enough to realize that it doesn't take an IT person to make this possible anymore. It's not that complicated. I mean, I, I have been an IT guy for a different, couple different companies throughout the years. I've done some things for companies where I've helped them out. You know, I've, I've helped them build their IT systems, their, you know, their phone systems, their computers, making sure they run properly, make sure the viruses are taken off because people download them during work hours and stuff. A lot of different weird stuff that has to be taken care of, you know, throughout the day with computers, you know, IT guys just run in the background. It seems like they don't really don't do anything. And IT guys really don't get noticed until something breaks down and then all of a sudden all eyes are on the IT guy. But um, there's a lot of things that go on in the background the IT guy does that never gets recognized. And I think those are the things that I think need to come out and be told to the average person, but not in like, not in Greek or German. If, you know, I mean, it's in like English, understandable to how it relates to you language. Like, you know, so... I know that if you use Facebook, that you're probably at this point in time, you know, it's like a, it's like a jackal and hide with Facebook. Like sometimes you're like, all right, I like it. Sometimes you're like, why am I spending four hours on this website? And so it's kind of like, I'm sure that if you use Facebook, you feel like that from time to time. I know I do. So if I, if I feel like that, I know there's other people out there that do feel like that. And that's why I registered. There's a, a, a dot com that I registered. It's a get my Facebook excuse me, getmyfacebook.com. And what that means is that basically I registered a domain name that was easy to remember. If you heard the domain, you wouldn't forget it. Getmyfacebook.com is simple to remember. The idea is that, you know, you download your information off of Facebook because they may not make that available, that feature, and um, you upload it uh, to your own .com. Uh, I would like to make the website, my website, somehow where you could upload the information to my website and basically it helps you sort through all your photos. I wouldn't keep your information. I would help you sort through it 
and then you would delete it off the website. Basically, it's like an intermediary to getting your own .com. However, I don't necessarily think that I want to deal with people's information. Um, Facebook does it. Twitter does it. Instagram does it. A lot of companies deal with your information. I, I think I, what, what my, my, my goal is, my dream, my vision, and in, in trying to educate just the average person about data control information, um, data processing, because that's what that was the school uh, classroom. That was what it was called, data processing, before it became networking and then computer science or whatever it's called today. It was data processing. And in data processing, I mean... Download some data from Facebook and then upload that to your .com and, and then create image galleries and, and share those things that basically you've forgotten about. I mean, since you started a Facebook account, if you had one for over five years and most the average person has had an account on that website for five years, there's a lot of information that you forget about because the timeline is is only the most recent stuff you'll see. And then you have to click on load more, load more, and scroll down. You know, a timeline should be from left to right, top to bottom. And at the very bottom of the page should be like, you know, the start of the timeline from the left side to the right of the side to the current. And it should have the date. That's a timeline. You know, uh, a timeline isn't, isn't just, you know, from top to bottom. It, it's like, it's, that's a page. You know, that's a page. That's not a timeline, whatever you want to call it. But if you're going to, if it's going to be a timeline, Facebook should change, you know, the page. So when it loads, it shows the timeline at the bottom and then the page at the top from in the most recent to the, the, the latest, you know, on, on that page. And it should give you the ability, Facebook should update their site to give you the ability to load the page how you want it to be presented and and they just don't they don't I don't think Facebook really gets it. I you know I really truly believe that Mark Zuckerberg I mean he created the website because he was upset about his girlfriend at the time who broke up with him back in college and he he had hacked some other websites hotornot.com which is now just a dating site but it, at one point hotornot.com was a website for rating people's hotness. So what hot or not was at the time then was since you could upload a photo of yourself and it would be rated between 1 and 10. Mark Zuckerberg at the time knew about this website. So he took the code from that website and since his wife currently, uh, his girlfriend in college, broke up with him at that moment, he wanted to prove a point to her. And that was that you can't do this and get away with it because I'm a nerd and I'm going to geek. I'm going to do something to get back at you. So he took that website, the code, and he put a picture of his girlfriend that broke up with him on the page that was like a static photo that stayed there, either on the left or right-hand side of the page. And then he hacked into all the sorority houses within the campus of the college he was going to and took all the photos of those ladies, and it was a rotating like list of you know photos on that page that would load every time you load the page it would be a random girl compared against the one photo that stayed the same, which was his ex girlfriend and you can rate the hotness of every girl in the sorority house at the time uh every girl that was on campus that was on the sorority uh websites that he you know he took all that information from. So what happened was is of course he got shut down. And you know, he had all these photos now of all these girls and what he wanted to do is create a website where you could basically log in then and say, "Yeah, that's my photo and this is my name." So he can have a like a um a book of people's faces, obviously now Facebook, uh you know, so he could have like a dating site basically uh but where the guys would know what girls, you know, where they're at. And at the time, he had still had the information on their, their quote-unquote hotness. So when Facebook first came out before it is what it is today, it was only available for people who were going to college. You had to be a part of a college to be part of Facebook. You couldn't not be in college and, and register an account. It just wasn't possible. 
so that was more of a dating thing. You know, people said what they was on their mind. It was, you know, it, it really was kind of a unique thing. And it was kind of cool, I guess, at first. But then everybody registered on it. And now it's just turned into a, a nightmare of, like, time consumption. There's a lot of companies that, you know, have wasted hours of potential profits of people where they could be making money, but people are spending their time on Facebook. And, you know, in general, too, in your personal life, you just, we waste too much time on Facebook. I think it would be good for people to be able to download their data and create their own dot com. So, you know, that's kind of what I want to do with this vlog is part of like entertain people, but also educate people at the same time. You know, I want I want to do music videos of me playing guitar and drums and having fun with that. And I want to work with other people on music in the area and, and people I meet and people I know. However, there's there's a lot of what I want to do is educate just the average person because I want I you know, the thing is I I think is that if I was in the position where I didn't have the knowledge that I have, that somebody would come forward and, and do what I'm doing just to make it available. So at least I would know that I'd have the option. If I was younger, if I was just like turning 18 or 19, or even in, 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 still in high school, I, I would like to know this information, you know, how to create my own website. So I don't have to just use Facebook for the rest of my life. I mean, I know that I would have my own .com that I could potentially do something with that you know and and you never know until you try you gotta you gotta you gotta put forth the effort and uh, you know i've had djcrazyjimmy.com for over 10 years i have that website since I, I don't remember exactly when i registered it but if you go to the web archive you can look at the history of any website including facebook you can see when it first came out originally and um it's pretty pretty interesting um the unique first page of facebook and at the very bottom it said a mark zuckerberg production i was like what that's 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 interesting so you know the reason i you know i'm doing this vlog and 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 basically talking into the mic like this is that i want to have fun doing this I, I would hope that people would be interested in what I have to say uh, in regards to how to create your own website, but also to promote, to promote my um, my app on the Google Play Store, the DJ Crazy Jimmy app, and um, you know work on some projects. Basically, I'm not going to move forward with some things until I start to get some response on YouTube and comments, questions, concerns, whatever it may be. You know, if if people are interested in what I'm doing. And that's that's what I need to know. I mean, if somebody's interested in what I'm doing, I'll do it. If not, there's no need to. And so, I mean, I'm not just, I've wasted years. I'm sure it's been at least one year of time. I, you know, there's 8,000 hours in a year. So I'm sure I've spent 8,000 hours at a computer working on projects, programming and stuff like that to learn. However, at this time, if I'm going to move forward and do any of that, I think that it would be good to have some motivation and some direction. But be leaded by people who give me advice. Just the average person on YouTube telling me, hey, you know, I would like to see this. I'd like to see that. And who knows what we can do from there. I mean, I, I have the resources and the ability to make some things happen, and I really don't want to do it unless I know there are some people interested in seeing what I can do from here on out. You know, if... uh if Facebook were to do something like this, where they would do an uncandid video of just talking into uh, the camera and upload it to, to YouTube and be like, this is what we want to do. This is our ideas for the future. This is you know what we see. What do you think of it? And then pay attention to that feedback. I think they would have a different way of doing things in the future than they do currently, where they just dictate oh, this is the changes we're going to make and everybody's going to have to accept for what it is. Um, I don't. I think that's that's okay. So you guys have ideas. If you're a company, you have ideas in the boardroom and you come up with them and you implement them and you make it possible for whatever reason, whether it be more profits or make it easier or make it nicer to communicate or whatever the, the vision is. But I think if a company were to start out by asking people for feedback and that's how they make their decisions... 
if that's how they how they move forward, I think that it would be a lot more interesting of a world. And I think because we have YouTube and the ability to make that possible today, I think somebody needs to take the step and move forward to do that. And, um, you know, I'm not really trying to make lots of money. I just want to do this to have some fun with it and experiment and see what will happen. You know, I, I would be happy if I have one or two people that I could help and I know that I help them create, you know, a website and take control of their data and, and maybe have to delete their Facebook because they're tired of it and not not lose contact with the people they want in their life. You know, the websites I, I see foresee in the future would be great for every individual person to have their own dot com, but like maybe like family, a family website you know, um, or private areas for certain family members and like, you know, chat rooms and stuff like that where the extended family members could chat in their own, you know, last name of a website and, uh, you know, can record videos and upload it to their own server. And, you know, the technology is available and not only that, it's affordable. You can get dedicated server hosting now, which just means that you own a computer in the cloud. So basically to wrap this up real quick, because I have been recording for a little while, and, and if you're still listening, I appreciate that. Um, I write blogs. It's not on, on an everyday basis, but every once in a while I do write a blog. Every time I upload a video on, on YouTube, I write something in the description, and I copy that over to my website. You can check out that website at djcrazyjimmy.com. That is a blog where I write at and then also post the video. Uh, this video and other videos that I've posted so Google will be able to index it. I also have, with like I said earlier, getmyfacebook.com. Currently, it just forwards to my YouTube channel. But I do plan on having something there uh, to kind of like educate people uh, on how how they can start their own .coms and get things going um, without a big overhead uh, for cost. Um. So that's pretty much what I got to say right now. Um, download the DJ Crazy Jimmy app on the Google Play Store, and I will try to prom- I will try to post more videos on a regular basis to YouTube. Um, my my goal is with this is basically to be able to record without um, having to edit uh, a bunch of audio because I said something or made a mistake. So just to be able to sit down record maybe 15-minute videos, 20-minute videos where I'm talking about certain things and uploading that for what it is and just accepting the outcome of it. But however, I will always uh, go back to just doing music as well, uh, playing guitar and drums. Um, I have to move equipment around when I record the drums, so my drums sit in the studio, but at the same time, my microphones, uh, they move around a little bit because depending on what I'm doing. So uh, that's what it is right now. Uh, like I said, check out djcrazyjimmy.com. Um, subscribe to this YouTube channel. If I get 10,000 subscribers, I'm able to go over to L.A. I only have, I think at this point, 280 subscribers. It went up. I was surprised recently. So I appreciate that. I really do. And um, I will hopefully one day have 1,000 subscribers, and we'll be one-tenth of the way there at that point, and that will be exciting. Anyway, take it easy. As always, I got jazz, blues, country, EDM, metal, rock, rap. You can go to electronicdancemusic.audio. It is EDM 24 hours a day. I also own that website. It goes right to the website uh, where I have a live audio player so you can listen to the best of EDM cuts. DJCrazyJimmy.com, Google Play Store, DJ Crazy Jimmy, and call the phone number 601-336-0052. That is also a phone number where you can just reach out and... Uh, leave a message and I will eventually get around to hearing it. And if I like it or there's something interesting, I might post it online to uh, entertain other people. So enjoy that. Have fun, take it easy and um, enjoy the holidays. If you already, uh, you know, happy new year.